Hey, it's Scott again from Oak Ridge Community Church. We're continuing our Life Minutes study on the topic of grace. This week, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about handling disagreements with grace. So let's be honest. You enter a room full of people, just throw out a hot button topic like the economy, a social, moral issue, a religious belief, you will find all kinds of viewpoints and thoughts. And even Christians um, disagree on certain interpretations of Bible passages and topics. Christians have different viewpoints on how to handle relationships, how to raise kids, how to handle their money. And like I said, when it comes to doctrinal beliefs, sometimes there's different viewpoints. And the major stuff we might agree on, but then we get into other areas and we see that we have some pretty heavy disagreements. The issue is not that we disagree. The issue is how we handle those disagreements. We are at times determined to win. I mean, that's the bottom line. I got to win the argument. I got to state my case. And when we do that, it's, it, we're not always open to even hearing what anybody else has to say. We've already made up our mind. They're not, they can't be right. Now, when we talk about this, we're not saying that objective truth does not come into play because sometimes our disagreements are more over opinions. But there is a place at times when we have to take a stand for what we call objective truth. But what we're talking about more is those disagreements in which we simply have differing points of view. For example, you're talking to somebody about if you're Christian and you're talking to another believer over a cup of coffee and you find out that you have two different views on when Jesus is returning for the church. Maybe your view is, well, I believe he's going to come before the start of the seven year tribulation period. And you discover that they have a view that says, well, I think he's coming at the end of this tribulation period. And so to me, it, those are type of disagreements I don't care about because we both agree that Jesus is coming back. But for some, they've got to win that argument. Now, I have a view on that. Somebody else has a different view on that. I know why I believe what I believe. But sometimes in our, our disagreements, we don't show a lot of grace. It, we don't. I've discovered too, and sometimes when disagreements happen, and I haven't run into this here at Oak Ridge, I want to say that, but I've seen it over the years. Sometimes disagreements are handled with the least tact, I have to say this, within the church. Now you would think that the church, or just being among other Christians from churches, that uh, this would be the place of acceptance, of love, of grace, and mercy, if you had a differing opinion on some, some stuff. But uh, sometimes Christians are the stingiest. And again, we're not talking about objective truths that the Bible says are beliefs that we have to hold on to. And we're talking about just differences of opinions on some things. So when it comes, though, to disagreements, not just about Bible things, but life in general, which we sometimes disagree with, like even the handling of money. Some people think the Bible teach one, teaches some things about handling money. Other people read the Bible and they get a whole different viewpoint. But on some of these disagreements of things, just keep in mind, they will happen. Disagreements happen. And we need to also remember this because if we get into that, I've got a win scenario or mindset. We forget that we can also disagree about stuff and not ruin a friendship or a relationship with somebody. Some people think that if we disagree on something, we can't be friends or that we cannot have any contact with each other. And yet Proverbs 27, 17 tells us that we can be friends and differ. And in fact, those differences will help us grow as people. So people, even Christians, disagree and as we know and it is true 
In some disagreements, both sides often have valid points. So when it comes to disagreements, especially when wanting to handle things right, let me just share with you three things to, to remember. And then we'll talk about how we are to respond to disagreements. First, we know this, if not handled right, disagreements can lead to ruined relationships and some bad situations. In Genesis 13, there is a disagreement between Abraham's herdsmen, those guys that are taking care of his sheep and all, and the herdsmen of Lot, two different individuals, and this disagreement happens. Well, Abraham steps up and he diffuses the situation but disagreements can often lead to ruined relationships. Okay, so we know that. The second thing about disagreements, they are often caused by selfish motives. They really are. I got to make sure that you know what I believe and you need to know that uh, whatever I think is the only way to think. And again, we're not talking about the obvious objective truth of scripture, which I think certain things are so laid out in, in the Bible that if we disagree on them, there's there's more to it than just a simple disagreement. The Bible teaches, for example, that Jesus is God. That's an unarguable tenet as far as I'm concerned. Historically, theologically, biblically, whatever you want to say. So someone says, well, I don't believe that. That's okay. We're going to agree to disagree. But in that case, there may be even a time when the disagreement becomes so, so strong that you kind of have to step back so we're not talking about and i could still get along with that person they don't have to agree with me on who christ is but the point of it is sometimes the disagreements are real because they're based on two viewpoints of objective truth that just we're not seeing anything similar on but mostly what we're talking about is disagreements that just happen because we got an opinion on something and we're not very gracious because someone has a different opinion. In Exodus chapter, or Numbers chapter 12, I should say, Aaron and Miriam get in an argument with their brother Moses and they cause all kinds of problems. It's all because of jealousy. So their disagreement comes up because of jealousy. The third thing about disagreements, our goal really should be to settle them as soon as possible or as quickly as possible. Now, sometimes on a theological viewpoint, it doesn't happen overnight unless someone comes to see a clear view of what the Bible says about something, you're not going to, you're just gonna to have to agree to disagree and it's not gonna be settled quickly. But let's say that you've had an argument with a friend over some issue. Uh, Matthew 5 says, if we know that we've caught, there's a problem, it says go deal with it. So we should wanna settle those, those disagreements that we have as quickly as possible. The longer we wait, often it gets worse. So what about having a disagreement with somebody over child raising, over how you handle your money, other things like that? Um, is there anything that we should consider and think about? I think there, there is. In the book of Acts, the 15th chapter, we read of a, a situation that happened. The two men involved, Paul and Barnabas, had been co-workers, they had been friends, they had traveled together, they had gone to different cities, started churches together. On one of those trips, they took along a young man named John Mark. We know him as Mark. He was Barnabas' cousin. On one of the trips, Mark, we don't know why, there's, the reasons aren't given, but he just up and left Paul and Barnabas. They were in the middle of a particular ministry they were doing and they needed all hands on deck. Mark decided he wanted to leave and he just got up and he left. In Acts 15, Paul and Barnabas are beginning, are planning to go on another trip. Go out, and talk to Christians, then go out and plant churches where there were no Christians. Barnabas decides it'd be a good thing to take Mark along. Let's give Mark another chance. That's kind of Barnabas's MO. He's called the son of encouragement. 
When the other Christians didn't want anything to do with Paul, when Paul became a, a believer, Barnabas came right alongside Paul and introduced him to other Christians. So Barnabas wants to take Mark on this trip. Paul doesn't. It's not that Paul doesn't like Mark, but Paul is concerned about Mark flaking out again, leaving him and Barnabas in a bad situation. And Barnabas says, well, Mark's going. And Paul says, no, he's not. And they get in this intense, heated argument. They disagreed on what to do with Mark. The end result was Barnabas took Mark, headed off to Cyprus. Paul took Silas, headed off in another direction. Even in that disagreement, God's word was taken other places. But they disagreed. They had a difference of opinion on what to do with Mark. But that's not the end of the story. Paul's last letter, 2 Timothy, you know what he says about Mark? He says, bring Mark to me, for he's profitable. There had been a reconciliation with Mark and Paul, even Barnabas and Paul had reconciled. And there was this strong disagreement, a matter of opinions, differences of opinions. And they could not have ever reconciled if it wasn't for grace, being willing to cut each other a little slack. So when it comes to grace and we have disagreements over some things, let me share with you just three things. Uh, except the fact there may be other viewpoints. We're not talking about compromising truth. We don't ever do that. But Paul and Barnabas both looked at John Mark in a different way, through a different lens. We have to be willing to accept by grace that others have a different opinion than us. The second thing is we can, we can disagree without assassinating someone's character. Here's what I've discovered. I bet you have too. Over the years, I've seen this. Some people, when they disagree, you know what they do? They go for the jugular. Man, they attack the person. They want to just wipe that person's character out. You know, you disagreed with me, so I'm coming after you. But that's not grace. God loves that person as much as he loves you and I. So don't assassinate someone's character because we have a disagreement. So realize there's different viewpoints. Don't assassinate someone's character. And then last is this. Get over the disagreement and get on with life. I don't have the time to have a, a, a differing viewpoint on, for example, the return of Christ or on spiritual gifts. Uh, somebody says, well, that gifts for today, that's not. I may have a, an opinion on it, but I don't have time to get derailed over stuff like that. And some people over anything that they disagree with you on, they can't let it go. They got to win. Let it go. The situation in Acts 15 wasn't good. I mean, it caused friction and problems between Paul and Barnabas, but good came out of it, you know? But we've got to do that. Just get on with life. Don't let it eat us up. And even if you disagree on things that are, for you as a Christian, foundational to our faith, I have to realize that not everybody is going to accept what I believe I'm not going to change my viewpoint and I'm not going to argue for the sake of argument to win them over because sometimes God's spirit, when it comes to disagreeing over objective truth, God's spirit has to work in a person's life. This is Scott. Have a great week. And next week in our, in a, our next look at grace, we're going to talk about how to experience God's grace when difficulties hit our lives. Take care.